Welcome to Inside Digital Photo TV. I'm your host, Scott Shepard, coming to you from the Photo Plus Conference and Expo 2007 here at the x Right booth in the beautiful Javis Convention Center. The Inside Digital Photography television program is brought to you by Epson and, of course, Acme Education. You can find out more information at proimaging.epson.com and acmeeducational.com. Right now, I'm here with Philip Anders. He is the editor and publisher of Better Photoshop Techniques. Hey, Philip, how are you doing? Hi, Scott. Glad to be here. It's a great show to come to. There's great stuff happening here. It's good to catch up with all my friends here as well. Yeah, it's great. Now, you did a conference session today. Tell me about what you spoke about. Uh, basically, we're talking about smart workflows. I mean, the, the, the latest buzz, buzzword is non-destructive smart workflows. And uh, we were looking at uh, reinterpreting some of, uh, some of the old style techniques, but in a smart way. So non-destructive workflows throughout. Make sure that uh, you are able to backtrack any of the changes that you make. And the virgin pixels remain just that, virgin pixels. Now that's a great, great topic to talk about. Let's talk about color management and the workflow. You're the editor and publisher of Better Photoshop Techniques, it's a magazine that's uh, published and distributed in Australia. Right. Available anywhere else in the States? Yes, it's available for subscription in the States, and there might be some big news next year in terms of better availability here as well. Um, basically, uh, color management is, is very cool for us because we, uh, even though we publish in, the, in Australia, we actually print in Hong Kong. And we don't get to show up at the printers and check out the color proofs as they're coming off the press. So it's key for us that we have tight color management, both within our own production space, but also with the printers. So by using tight, tight color management, we're able to predict the kind of colors that are coming off their printer, and we use x to do that. So tell me how you're doing. I mean, of course, your monitors are calibrated. Tell me how the workflow goes from calibrating the actual ink on paper presses in Hong Kong to what you guys are doing and vice versa back and forth. Sure. I mean, it's essentially what we do at our end is, uh, yeah, you got it right. We make sure all our screens are fully calibrated. We work both Mac and Windows systems, so we make sure that they're all comparable. Uh, so that gives us a key, key way to make sure what we're seeing on screen is a good predictor of what we're going to get out on press. Second thing we do is we make sure we have ICC profiles coming from the printers themselves, and we use those as the way of um, us optimizing our output to their press. But to, to be doubly sure what we're doing is going to be uh, predictable enough, we also profile our inkjet printers, our proof, proofing inkjet printers, our absent inkjet printers in the office. We do that with the X-Ray product, and then we simulate the Hong Kong press using our inkjet printers. That way we can, we, we can print our prints, and we can get pretty close to what they're going to get on their press. We send those pages over with the, with the PDF documents, and that way we can guarantee the color that we get back is uh, there's no shocks in it, let's just say that. So they're going to give you an ICC profile for their printer, and you guys load this in using the X-Rite software, and you can actually get your stuff calibrated using the Epson inkjet, so you can match pretty close to what's actually printed in the book. That's correct. Um, the ICC profile that comes through from Hong Kong, we use that inside InDesign and do a soft proof when we print out, we print out directly to the, uh, the Epson, but we make the Epson simulate the Hong Kong press. So it's very cool. It's a great way of working. And uh, when you're, you know, six hours on a plane away from the guys who are actually printing and six weeks on a ship for the magazine coming back and you've already reached into your pocket to pay for that print, you've got to make sure it's going to work. And the X-Rite stuff does. Exactly. You know, it's all about color management because, like you said, with digital photography now and all the stuff going on, if your monitor's not calibrated, and you're not doing printer profiles, especially when you start playing with different papers and stuff, it's really a key thing. That's key. I mean, the, all the advances in the, in the software that we use, I mean, we're getting so much, so much better color control, so much better, better color, uh, the ability to change our colors in our images using Photoshop and Lightroom, and yet most people are still not calibrating their screens. So they're doing these amazing things to colors, but not actually seeing accurately what they're doing. Uh, even, even the quality of the screens are key. There's some really good screens around now. There's some screens that will provide you 98% of the Adobe RGB space and a self-gamma correcting. These sorts of things are key because the screen is your interface to the color and to the tone of your image. Now, do you like uh, the, talking about the new screens? Are you guys using the Mitsubishi stuff, the ISO monitors? Which ones do you actually like using that gets right up to Adobe RGB? It's the ISO monitors we're using. Um, they've got a self-correcting system in them which uh, provides uh, flat, uh, 
or provides even lighting across the whole of the screen itself, they also have that great ability to provide us with at least 98%, or is it 95%, something around that range of the Adobe RGB space. Now, when you match that up with the standard kind of screens, you're not seeing the colors that you're able to print. Uh, and this is a key problem. So great screens are important. I mean, it's the way that you see your images. Uh, and we shouldn't just think it's to buy something off the, off the street or off the shelf that's cheap, because uh, it's the primary way you interact with those files. Well, exactly, because you know with the new Epson printers and this enhanced ink set, you can actually exceed Adobe RGB now. So if your monitor isn't up to R Adobe RGB or anything's not even calibrated, you're basically wasting your time. That's correct. I mean, uh, up until this point where we've got better monitors, uh, a lot of the stuff that we do is all by the numbers because we can't trust their screen. So unless you're a, a bit of a, a printer geek and you know what CMYK numbers are, flesh tone, for instance, uh, it becomes a big problem unless you've got a good, good monitor. Now, Philip, tell me more information about the magazine. You guys have a website. Where can people look at this, subscribe to it, all the stuff that you guys are up to? Sure. You can just go to betterphotoshoptechniques.com, and uh, there you'll be able to see uh, all the magazine issues that we have. Uh, you can subscribe uh, from anywhere in the world. Uh, but keep tuned. Next year, we might have some big news for you in terms of availabil availability, availability here in the U.S. That's great stuff. I really appreciate your time today, Philip. Thanks very much, Scott. Pleasure to be here. Thanks. There you go. Another key thing why you should do color management. Make sure your monitor is calibrated and you'll have great product just like their magazine. Inside Digital Photos are brought to you by Epson and of course Acme Educational. You can find out more information at proagenium.epson.com and over at acmeeducational.com. You can find out this great stuff going on with x and x and of course our stuff inside digitalphoto.com.